Hey guys, Andrew Henderson, nomadcapitalist.com here in Tbilisi, Georgia. And offshore banking for your business. If you've set up an offshore company, then you're going to need an offshore bank account if you plan on doing any business. And I want to talk a little bit about that today because there are a lot of folks who are still going out there and setting up companies by simply Googling around, uh, diagnosing their own uh, symptoms and prescribing their own cure for which company serves them best, whether that's Cyprus or Malta or Hong Kong or BVI or Vanuatu or Timbuktu or wherever, and then going and Googling and finding some low-cost service provider to help them set up that company. Now, uh, for some people, that may not be a bad idea. If you're an American, you're a Canadian, you're Australian, you're someone from a high-tax country, could potentially be a very bad idea. We'll talk about that in another video. But today I want to specifically talk about the bank relationships that these um, people have and why it's not necessarily all it's cracked up to be and why you should be very careful opening a bank account that's recommended off the shelf. I'll give you an example. Uh, when I set up my very first uh, Hong Kong company, I was kind of feeling around and trying to figure out who were the people that would pass my step test. And when I found one, they said, hey, by the way, we also have a, um, we can, it's part of the process, we, we'll refer you, we'll introduce you to one of our banks in Hong Kong, and they'll help you get an account. And so I inquired a little bit further, I didn't know nearly what I knew now. It turns out, in this case, being that this is a Hong Kong company, pretty much everybody at the time, and, and still a number of people now, recommend exclusively HSBC in Hong Kong. There was no discussion of, well, hey, um, you know, how much are you turning over? What's your business? What kind of industry are you in? Etc. to determine if I'd be a good fit to work with HSBC or maybe there's another bank. It was just as part of their service package, everyone gets an account open at HSBC. Kind of like everyone who buys a Cracker Jack box gets a free toy. And over the years, as I've set up numerous companies around the world, I've learned why that doesn't necessarily work. Here's why. Uh, when these low-cost providers set up your company for you, um, their bench of contacts isn't necessarily very deep. Again, for example, in Hong Kong, everyone for years just recommended every single business to HSBC in Hong Kong, which I've recently dubbed in another video, the worst bank in the world. It's the worst. Um, and there are a lot of people who are now having huge problems. I talked to one guy, they froze $2 million of his money. I've heard dozens of other stories and met other people, both in Hong Kong and, and doing what I do at Nomad Capitalist, who've had similar problems. So finally, months and probably even years behind the times, I'm hearing that some of these low-cost providers in Hong Kong are finally no longer recommending HSBC. Some still are. Some are still recommending that little cracker jack in the box that, hey, we'll open a bank account for you. It's just going to be only the one bank that we know. Here's why that doesn't work. If you want to get international advice, you wouldn't ask someone who's never lived outside of the United States or never traveled outside of the United States. If you want to know where's the best place to go on vacation, it's not in the United States, you wouldn't ask someone who's never left Ohio. Nor would you ask someone who doesn't understand why you'd want to travel. Somebody who doesn't see the need to travel wouldn't be a very good person to give you travel advice. And the same thing goes for banking. Guys who set up companies in Hong Kong, or any place really, for a low cost are not advisors, they're accountants or they're uh, paper pushers, they're, they have a, a nice little kind of robotic business going and that has worked for them. But it's no longer working so much anymore because um, banks are changing, banks are becoming more stringent, banks don't want certain types of customers, banks want minimum deposits, HSBC now, I, I think you can still get a business account if you're willing to deposit $2 million. It used to be like $10,000, so it's no longer accessible. And nobody's really taking the time to understand their clients because they've never done it themselves, right? So the guys who are the accountants in Hong Kong, they know how to fill up paperwork. They're great at that. What they don't know is, A, the tax consequences in your home country or in your country of citizenship. That's a whole other video entirely. But what they also don't know is many banks because, again, they're not going to Singapore to check out the banks. So they're not going to Mauritius to check out banks or the BVI. They're not really making those contacts generally. They're not on the ground. They haven't been to the banks. They don't know what's going on. So it's a very superficial set of knowledge. And again, if you're you know, a guy who lives in Uzbekistan and just wants a company set up on the cheap to 
um, you know, process some money or own some patents or something, then that's great. Maybe that works for you. For the average entrepreneur who has some complexity in their business and who can't afford to have any problems, then it doesn't work so much anymore because again, the tax part, uh, but also the banking part. HSBC really only works for 1% of these people's clients, yet there are still people recommending it to every single person because they haven't gone anywhere else to figure out where the other banks are. You know, five, definitely 10 years ago, I would have told you, hey, you know, great, go online, find the cheapest person you can find, find the cheapest account in your own country to make sure you're doing it right, and then go to any bank, just turn up and bring your cash and you'll be fine. But in the last five or 10 years, we've had the Panama Papers, we have enhanced anti model laundering, we have new OECD regulations, we have FATCA, we have uh, reporting uh, sharing among now 100 countries by 2018. We have increased tax uh, checkups in your home country if you have a foreign country. We have new um, uh, you know, tax problems like uh, Colombia has with Panama, for example. So there's a lot of things going on that the people who just know how to fill out forms don't necessarily know how to handle, both in terms of setting up your company, but also in terms of getting your bank account. And so my suggestion to you, if you're looking to set up an offshore company and you want a bank account to go with it, is this. Find someone who knows what you're going through. There are people out there who do, uh, for a small number of people uh, who are entrepreneurs, that could be us here at Nomad Capitalist. For the rest of you, that could be any number of other people. But if you're trying to pay the cheapest amount of money, the, the least amount of money to set up your offshore company and you expect to get a good bank account out of that, Realize that you get what you pay for. The people who do things for 500 or 1,000 bucks probably don't spend much time getting to know many bankers. They probably don't spend much time trying to figure out your situation. Uh, it's just a mill. And so, as with anything else in life, you get what you pay for when it comes to going offshore. And right now, uh, that is causing a number of folks problems with having accounts at these off-the-shelf offshore banks, the same offshore banks that every uh, offshore corporate formation service refers people to. And I imagine a lot of their people are very unhappy with their banks right now or they no longer have any banks. So the advice is any offshore company have two bank accounts just in case. And the second piece of advice is get customized advice that meets your business's situation. If the person helping you open a bank account doesn't understand who you are or what your business does, there's a high chance that you're going to have problems in the years to come because the off-the-shelf solutions no longer work. We talk about this here on YouTube a lot. You can subscribe to our channel uh, to learn more. We encourage you to do that. Definitely check out nomadcapitalist.com as well for how to set up your company, how to bank offshore, and how to do so legally and efficiently.